All right, I'm Matt Donovan, and uh, let's see, I'm the current facilitator for the uh, HPT case competition here for ISPI. Uh, this is our third year in the program, and uh, not only am I the facilitator, but I'm also one of the key designers of the program, and uh, have uh, been collaborating a lot with our past judges and our past faculty sponsors and all of our teams to kind of keep the enthusiasm going, a great experience each and every year, and kind of just kind of closing out uh, with each of the participants on their lessons learned. Speaking of lessons learned, Matt, uh, after three years of doing this, what are your current ahas and learnings yourself from this entire experience? Well, just kind of trying to keep true to the case, uh, the purpose of the case itself is we're really focusing on continuous improvement. So, uh, you know, after each of the years, we're always going back to the drawing board, seeing how we can tweak this, make this better, easier to implement, easier to facilitate, and then really trying to build on it for uh, longevity so that this is going to be a key part of the ISPI experience for years to come. So I would say after our third year, some of the key things that I've taken away is that uh, uh, I guess refresher is that, hey, you know, it's been a year since we did this and the students are just as engaged. Um, the response from the ISPI general participants is really strong. The judges, you know, are getting a lot out of it. And, and I think that that's, if, if I've learned it again this year, it's just that, you know, this is why we continue to do this. And so the, the, the huge value from it. Um, you know, after the sessions and even, you know, as I'm coaching some of the students that are coming into this as their client, I learn a lot about what it is that they're struggling with. What are the challenges they're facing? How are they pushing? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So, um, so as I speak to some of the students and, and off, you know, as their client or also listening to some of their challenges, I'm learning a lot about what it is that they're struggling with as emerging professionals and really focusing on um, helping them make that transition from a emerging professional to uh, an HPT practitioner. So. The, the learnings are always there. That never changes. It's just what are the new trends and, and based on the programs that we're engaging, the age of the students, the participation with them, um, they all bring new challenges to the table. But uh, we're getting better each year. The judges, I think, were about fine-tuning that right participation level, giving them the right information where they can provide that valuable feedback without killing them in the process. So uh, those are some of the key highlights. So. Um, you've touched a little bit on the on the purpose of the competition, but from a particularly as from the student uh, viewpoint here, what would be your one floor elevator speech here on the purpose of the competition? If you were to ex explain this to maybe a, a faculty advisor to some students themselves, so uh, the HPT case competition is intended to provide an authentic. Uh, real life, real world experience for students to apply what it is they've been learning in theory and put it into application uh, in, in front of professionals who have been doing this for several years. Uh, so it, it is a great opportunity to close the feedback loop through an authentic learning experience. Okay, thank you. Um, now that we've been in this for three years here, what was the history, the ramp up to the start of this? Whose idea was this? Who else was involved? How did you uh, get the society to embrace this and, and put this on? Well, I, I remembered three years ago, and I think it was the ISPI at uh, San Francisco, and so three or four years ago, maybe about four years ago. I can't remember anyway. I remember seeing a session where Carol Panza and some other folks were trying to put together a very quick case study for some business professionals. And I just saw the engagement um, and, it, and, and people beginning to have a hunger for what, what is an opportunity to really get an, an apples to apples comparison of here's a case, let's all take a crack at it, let's look at different perspectives. And I said, you know, what is the opportunity to be able to take that to bridge into our uh, emerging uh, professionals? So not only, you know, would, would our, our colleagues get a benefit out of this, but really trying to say, how do we help bring the emerging professionals into ISPI? Because it's, it's a necessary bridge we've got to do. We've got to make the connection. Uh, overcoming that challenge that uh, a new professional coming into HPT may be absolutely overwhelmed and say, wow, I mean, you have to know so many things and, and so many domains and all this other stuff to be really good at this. I really want to kind of challenge that and knock that down and say, you know what, you don't have to have 50 years of experience. You don't have to, uh, you know, have consulted for Fortune 50 companies in order to do this. So give uh, the teams an opportunity, students an opportunity to really apply their, their craft in front of 
uh, other professionals that can give them feedback on it and, and hold something constant. So uh, it, it's been a very interesting outcome and I think we've fulfilled and met that mission. Uh, the number of students, uh, even in the session today, I mean, we had, I think, five or six, actually six uh, alumni from the case competition who were students who are now joined us as part of a society and who are coming back and, and remembering the experience. So who would you credit uh, as, as uh, working with you in creating all of this? Who are the, who are the players and the, oh, the people that we would appreciate? Well, absolutely. From the beginning, Dawn Papela was the first. She was there, I think, at the orig origination and the inception. And she really kind of helped. You know, I came to her and I said, here's what, something I'd really, really like to do. But I also know you know a lot about the society as well. And if you'd be interested in partnering and, and doing this. And Dawn really collaborated, not only, I think, in... in coaching and thinking about the design and providing that as, as ISPI, as uh, somebody who would bring it into play for them, um, what would the objections be, what would the considerations we need to be. So Dawn was really helpful and instrumental in, in getting it uh, set up well, positioned well within the competition. Uh, John Chin and Marcy Pena, um, for the first year, both put in a lot of effort to help kind of craft the case. Uh, think through the rubrics and talk about the learning experience for the students. So in, in the first year that they were definitely uh, contributors to this. Uh, ongoing, all of the judges have, have provided feedback. I mean, from the first year we had Klaus Whitkun, Daryl Sink, uh, Claire Carey, Char Wells, and Kathy Brown. And they were, you know, trying to bridge all that, those judges across the area. They not only judged in the competition, but they also provided valuable feedback that helped us after for the second year. And then the second year we had, you know, just as outstanding a, a group of judges. So I mean thinking through the faculty sponsors and the judges that have participated. So everybody owns a little piece of that. But from the first year I'd say those were really the first ones that kind of helped us launch it. Very good, thank you. How uh, give us a quick overview of the phase by phase, step by step major steps here that the that the whole program takes. Uh, how how do you start off here? How do you acquire the the students for this? So uh, probably lead time of about six months. We start recruiting for uh, you know identifying schools that we would like to invite. Um, you know obviously they have to have a graduate or master's level program with an HPT component to it. Uh, many of them may be instructional design, educational psychology, but we also know they have an HPT component. Uh, finding a faculty sponsor who's willing to sponsor the team. So I, I make a lot of phone calls based on recommendations I've gotten from uh, ISPI, uh, the fold at ISPI and say, hey, have you reached out to so-and-so in such a program? And extend invitations and depending on schedules, availability, student interest, we kind of settle on our three to five teams that we're going to participate. Uh, so that all happens typically in the fall and then in the spring we kick off the competition where we first uh, orient with the actual student teams and then the student teams start to get their base materials and uh, they then progress through the, uh, the, the competition or the actual project in their case uh, through up to the ISPI um, conference as well. Now beyond that we also have um, the judge preparation that we do, which involves uh, orientation, a couple of orientation meetings, the phone calls identify and select judges. You know, our great panel of judges are, are very busy people, so trying to find all the right timings and the right availability is key. What have you learned about, uh, uh, or you perceived about the students' strengths and weaknesses at this point in their education from this? So as, as an observer, and I personally take myself out of the voting or, or the judging of it, and so as a client contact and the rapport I develop with them, I have a unique perspective, but I also want to make sure that I stay um, as, as unbiased as possible in the judging. But from my perspective, I think I'm intrigued that the amount of business acumen that the students, you know, from a... From, a, from an experience level is one thing that I think they need more experience in. And that business acumen is not only from a financial standpoint, but also understanding the workings of a business itself. You know, you think about the, the end to end from an organization and its internal support structures. So uh, business acumen is, is one where they learn a lot about. Not many of them come in with a deep, rich history of business acumen. Um, but they're graduate students and, uh, you know, as part of this process is that build on that. Um, some of the other non, I mean, HPT is one of the areas that they actually have a decent background in because, you know, they've got formal training in it. So, uh, you know, they, they, they can name the models, they're familiar with the models. This may be their first opportunity to apply a model. 
so there's always that kind of growing cur uh, learning curve and the opportunity for growth around how do I apply the models I've now read about. Uh, and I think one other key area is, is really around uh, team, working on a team, and, and that's outside of HPT, where students begin to learn a lot about how do I work with somebody else either that's really co-located with me right next to me or somebody at a distance, and I have to put together a presentation for a client. So how do I work well with my colleagues and trying to achieve something that's probably pushing me out of my comfort zone? So, mm -hmm. What's your vis vision of the future? Where does this go? Oh, well, growth-wise, I would love to find a way of, to put an infrastructure where we can actually uh, engage more teams and also be able to uh, have them be able to present, all present. And uh, one of the big challenges that's kind of a down uh, disadvantage I see is that we, we've done five teams in the past, but we only have room for three for center stage presentation. I would love to find a, an infrastructure where without killing the judges and everybody else trying to do this, where we can actually share the experience, uh, allow more teams to participate, allow more students to shine, and, and share, share what, the, what it is they're learning from this, and also get feedback on it. So uh, that's where I would like to see it go. I don't know exactly how it's going to get there yet, and um, I'm toying with ways that technology may help us. Um, looking at ways that we want to make you know standardized feedback so that um, even maybe judges may may have shared judging and so not judges don't have to review everything so these are things we're toying around with but trying to, to put the the experienced professionals that are make up ISPI next to the emerging professionals and they can actually look at a specific case and somebody They've both done the effort. From the experience side, we've thought about these things a lot, and then from the new people saying, we've just tried to think about this. And at that moment, that's that rich point of enlightenment, I think, that begins to happen. That's when learning happens, not just having tried it, but it's that, that feedback and that shared dialogue. So if I can find a way to have that happen more often, that's my goal. Is there anything else that the rest of the International Society for Performance Improvement, the members, the advocate members, the various other corporate sponsors, how can we as a community help you continue to help the students? Well, I mean, obviously, the, 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 the easiest ways to support us would obviously be to seek out and help us support us through the judging, um, or, you know, seeking out to participate in the judges. Uh, attending the sessions, providing feedback to the students. So clearly those are way, easy ways, I think, to participate and then help getting involved. I, I also think it is embracing the challenge of, of getting the dialogue between the experienced folks with um, you know, those, those emerging professionals. So if there are new and interesting ways that we can drive those dialogues, so if you're a consumer of HPT consultants or if you uh, are trying to establish that within your organization, thinking about ways, and, and this is a model for what we're doing as, as a way to try to achieve that. So um, tackling that, that bigger problem using these case-based approaches, thinking about maybe innovative new strategies to do that. So, um, so I gave a couple more innovative, some that are easy to achieve, um, but uh, we're always looking for uh, what I would consider is um, uh, sponsorship. I mean, obviously getting the students to the actual conference itself is is, is economic uh, challenge for some of them. So we want to make sure that they're able to attend the conference, they're able to actually participate. Um, so getting them to the conferences, getting their conference fees um, waived so that they can participate. Um, actually reaching out with the faculty sponsors. Go back to your programs and say, you know, why haven't I seen such and such a program involved in this? Can you put together three students? I mean, you know, can we not get four students together that would love to participate and learn from this? Um, you know, as, as a growth opportunity. So, uh, you know, thinking about how, you know, your schools and, and your, your history could connect with this. You think you can squeeze something out of that? I can. Thank you, Matt, for, your, uh, for all that you do for HPT and the emerging uh, professionals. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, first, thank you for agreeing to join us in this video interview. We're here to talk about the HPT case competition, of which you were a part of in the past. But before we launch into that, uh, can you please introduce yourself to our video audience? Yeah, absolutely. I'm Gary DePaul. I am a manager at Lowe's. I am living in the Charlotte area 
and a member of the Charlotte chapter. I'm a past president of the Tampa Bay chapter, also a member of the Armed Forces chapter, which a lot of people do not know, and anyone can be a member of. And also, I am the outgoing chair of the chapter's partnership committee. And I've been actively involved in ISPI for about 10, 12, 13 years, something like that. Thank you. Um, first of all, tell us, what years were you involved in this HPT case competition, which is now in its third year? Yep, I was in the second year, which was 2010, and um, that's when I got started. Cool. Uh, at this point in time here, as you reflect back on that experience, what, what were your personal ahas or learnings or takeaways from that experience? One of the things that I really picked up on as I was reading through the case study is that a lot of the students did not necessarily get what is a value with executives. So this was written for executives and they had some great ideas, phenomenal ideas. It was fantastic reading them, but some of them were a little bit out there and it was enough to where I can understand why they would say something like that, but why an executive might not find it as valuable. So the aha for me was, you know what, sometimes people don't get what exec what's, our, what's valuable for executives. Mm -hmm. uh, from your particular viewpoint, how would you explain the purpose of the competition to someone else? Sure, this is a great experience for someone coming in from a university to be able to try to pull together everything they've learned about human performance technology and apply it to a very realistic case and get some feedback from practitioners out in the field and sometimes not only practitioners but I understand some academics and some even some people that are theorists and heavily involved in building our practice. Thank you. Um, Tell, tell us how the competition worked, you know, what was the process and what your role as a judge was and what you did and how long it took and things like that. Sure. So from a judge's perspective, uh, the person putting it together met with us, gave us sort of what the expectations were. We received copies of the proposals from the students and it took it took a lot longer than we thought to read through them. It was probably about 12 hours of our time just to go through it. And not only did you go through it and just read the materials, but you had weighted criteria and you had to look at each one and say, how would you rate on this criteria for each one of those? And I understand that the case proposals are shorter now, so it's a little bit less time. The best part was when we talked as judges together about why we rated people and we calibrated, in a sense, what our ratings. Uh, some of us changed our ratings based on what others said and that was a fantastic experience. Then from that we went to actually hearing the proposals and then we finished up the judging and at the best part was at the very end when we got to speak openly with the winners and the other teams. Cool, thank you. Um, what do you think, from your perspective here, what were the students' strengths and weaknesses at this point in their education from what you were able to see? What was great was some of the students did a fantastic job with analysis. They, they identified a lot of the things that they were taught on and taught to look at, but some of the things that they were weak on was not knowing exactly about what that industry was. And I'll give you a real quick example. In the restaurant industry, there's a pretty high turnover, and that's okay, it's by design, depending on the type of uh, restaurant. Uh, but you may not know that if it doesn't come out in your analysis. So it was, a, it, was, it was a great opportunity for them to do the analysis, and some of the stuff they found was strong and some of it they they didn't ask necessarily all the right questions so it was, it was a great fine-tuning experience for them. What, what do you think, uh, it's a great experience for them but uh, what does this really do for the student? They go through this competition, they get assessed against a standard criteria that they got to see before they did this thing and there's it's norm reference, there's somebody that's chosen <laughs> as the top group, etc. So what do you think the students take away is from this? What does an experience like this do for them? So it gives them the, their first opportunity in most cases, I think, to be able to practice HPT 
And so that means they were able to not only look at a fictitious website, but they were able to do interview and they were able to practice interviewing, practice asking questions and realizing what all goes into doing performance improvement analysis. So that, I, that experience is worth a lot. I know when I left graduate school, I did not have that. And one of the, just speaking personally from someone who did not have this experience, one of the things that I had difficulty with was going out there saying, okay, I have a lot of academic experience, but I don't have a lot of practical experience. So I had to learn that in the field, and it was a little bit more of a, it was a different transition altogether. So this is a phenomenal way for them to get in, in their first experiences. Well, thank you, and thank you for doing the judging here for this uh, effort. Is there anything that you'd like to add, any perspectives that you have about this in general? Yeah, just one thing is that I was so impressed with that experience, both from being a judge and from seeing how it influenced the students, that I actually helped the group uh, that put this together and found the next judge for the next year, and I did it again. So I've already lined up another judge for the following year uh, because I wanted those other people to share this and have similar experiences and benefit from it. Thank you very much for your time today. Hey, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Don Kirkey. I am the Director of Learning Strategy and Implementation at Lowe's Home Improvement, and I was a 2011 case study competition judge. So based on uh, your current experience as a judge, uh, can you share some of your uh, aha moments or your learnings as you participated? Um, I was, um, well, first and foremost, I have to say it was more work than I expected. That. Um, but it was satisfying, challenging work, and I enjoyed the preparation. I was, by and large, impressed with the students and, and the work that they had done. And, uh, and um, as I think I have told some other folks, I became, through this competition, increasingly invested in these students. I wanted them to succeed. I. Uh, I felt uh, elated when they gave good answers to the questions that the judges presented. I was crushed when they dodged questions or, uh, or gave generalized answers or obfuscated. And uh, I, I really did want them to succeed. I'm uh, delighted to be involved in this. So given you know, the range of outcomes that are possible for the students from, um, you know, getting an authentic experience to opportunity practicing with a, a client interaction to getting great uh, constructive feedback. What do you think uh, some of the key outcomes along those lines that you see in the teams actually witness? Well, I, I you know, I, I think uh, you've named some of them already. I think uh, I'm, I'm excited that they get the uh, a good, rich, messy data set which is which reflects the real life that I as a consumer of, of consultant services would probably provide uh, and it is very much more like real life than many of the, the case studies they may have seen up until this point. So uh, I think that that's, there's a real touch of reality there. I think that helps them enormously. I, um, I, I'm um, excited that they get to follow a typical process which is a written submission to an RFP and then a formal presentation to essentially to pitch that uh, that proposal and, uh, um, and no, that's that's that's, what no, that's, that's great <laughs> okay no, that's, that's good that's excellent. I had a third point and it disappeared but anyway <laughs> you, you're gonna have to cut that um, I'll dub it in <laughs> Uh, so, so looking at your role as the judge, just from your perspective, um, as a judge and some of the tasks and activities you did from you know the early orientation all the way through presentation and tomorrow's session. So, can you just elaborate a little bit on your role? Uh, the uh, um, Matt Donovan, who uh, organized this, uh, did an incredible job of bringing it together and of relieving us of many of the, uh, of the, of the more onerous tasks. So our job really was, uh, he briefed us and then we needed to do a detailed review of the case study itself so that we had some background on the company and its challenges. And then 
I read each of the written proposals in uh, at least twice, uh, occasionally cross-referenced them against each other, uh, looked for continuity within the proposals. So uh, did the solutions line up with the problems? Did the timeline, was the timeline realistic given the proposed solutions? Did I think that the proposed solutions were really going to address the business's needs in a, in a timely manner? So uh, this is not this is something that I would do day to day in my job of supervising performance consultants as well as in reviewing proposals from outside consultants. I'd be looking at whether they understood our business, whether their proposals were sound, were realistic, and uh, were cost effective. So um, I think from there I prepared detailed feedback so this is that's where I stepped um, out of role as an executive in a large company and moved into uh, coach for these students so detailed feedback about concerns I had things that impressed me um, and suggestions for ways that they could improve and uh, today we've just finished their formal presentations again um, we are doing both rating as well as providing feedback because we want to see these students to be successful. Uh, I did not see anybody that I uh, didn't think had real potential to play a role in our profession and that was great. So looking at uh, now you've had two opportunities to interact with them, the presentation as well as a written proposal and just um, in your interactions with them in both those formats, what do you get a feel that they're taking away from it or what they're learning. You've also had other conversations with them as well. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. Um, the, um, I think the students, this is, I think I mentioned a little earlier, this is a touch more real than some of the other activities they may have been involved in up until this point. So I think uh, that's particularly helpful for them. When I reflect on the work that they've provided, it has been often, uh, I've been impressed with how they've leveraged HPT models and HPT methodology. Um, it's, they've applied some good research approaches. I've been, uh, I've been pleased with that. Um, I, uh, if I have feedback to them, probably uh, all three of them are still a little academic, a little not enough using the language of business and, and the logic of business. Um, so, or even the logic of uh, if, if they had been making a proposal to a nonprofit, there's still, there's language and there's expressions and there's approaches that make sense in those world. And uh, that's the part that as they get more and more seasoned, I think they'll, they'll, uh, they'll bring that in. So one, one other question, and we'll, if there's anything else you can you want to add, you can add on the end of it. But I, I think I haven't asked you yet about what you personally have got out of it yet, have I? Okay. Uh, you have not, and, and uh, it's been very hard work. Uh, it's also been very satisfying, and I think there's, a, there's satisfaction at a couple of levels. Uh, it has been, um, I actually, in reading the proposals, ended up taking some notes away. Uh, I downloaded a couple of articles that they had referred to that I had not read and I was impressed with and and they had some ideas that I hadn't run across before so uh, I definitely I've learned and that's been great uh, I think um, in in addition this is my uh, part of my personal desire to grow the society and to make sure that we are all leaving a legacy of people who take a strong performance-oriented approach to improving business, and especially looking at the people process tool side of, uh, of this work. So uh, this, is, this has been far more um, unexpectedly satisfying and, um, and I've gained and I, I think I thought initially that I was it was purely something that I was offering as a uh, as a duty to the society, and I've, I, it's turned out that I've learned some things too, and that that's been a great element to this. 
Any other final comments? Um, no, I, this is, uh, it's been great. I would do this again and, uh, and I would recommend it. And uh, we could use a couple more folks from uh, business who have been hiring consultants. So there you go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Guy Wallace. I was just recently a judge in the Human Performance Technology case competition put on by the International Society for Performance Improvement. This was for the year 2011, the third year that the case competition has been in existence. Um, I really have some uh, uh, happily surprised at how wonderful an experience it was. It was a lot of work as a judge from my perspective um, and I was, I was very excited to participate in this um, because what I saw what it did for the students that were involved. There were three different universities involved. There were four students from each university. They read a set of detailed information, background information about a company. They got a chance to ask for more data, to conduct interviews with different roles in this fictitious case company, uh, to put together a proposal to deal with the performance issues, the business issues that they were to have found uh, buried in this case competition content. Um, it's quite exciting and of course every group of people will take a look at the same amount of materials and have different takeaways and of course we did experience that. My aha was that um, this was often for many of the students their first opportunity to integrate all of the various concepts and models and methods and tools and techniques that they had been learning into one cohesive case study. Uh, very exciting. Several of them said they learned more in this experience than in any of their program thus far. And of course I don't quite believe that because without the foundation of learning all those separate discrete pieces, uh, they wouldn't have been able to conduct the integration that this case uh, competition afforded them. But that was quite exciting. The purpose of the case competition is to give an authentic learning experience to these students, uh, less so a competition than a learning exercise, but to make it more authentic, it had to have that realism of uh, somebody was going to win and have their proposal accepted in a case competition, much as it would be for various consulting firms bidding on a piece of work and there's going to be somebody who gets it and others who don't. Uh, the difference here is that there was going to be extensive feedback provided to the students uh, after they completed first their proposal of 35 pages plus any additional appendices that they might wish to add and then making a live presentation to the panel of judges and to other assembled ISPIers at uh, the International Conference. Um, it was quite exciting. As a judge, I was uh, given extensive briefing along with my other four uh, judges involved in this by Matt Donovan, the creator of uh, this wondrous thing. Um, and we were given the background of the company and given the background of what the students had been given and not given yet, but what was there for them to find. Um, their experiences, their timeline, it was all very rushed and crushed and you know it takes place over the course of uh, I forget exactly how many weeks but it happened to uh, span uh, a lot of folks uh, spring breaks and uh, so it was quite an intense experience for them and if you think about that those of you who are in the consulting business that itself can be quite authentic. Not enough time, not perfect data, um, some conflicting data, so how is it that you deal with that? It, it's, it was very exciting in terms of its authenticity. Um, I had to review as a judge these three different uh, proposals. I, when I reviewed, when I first saw them, I scanned them. I went back and uh, looked at them and compared them section by section across the three and went through my first pass that way. Uh, thorough pass that way. Then I took a look at each one uh, it, themselves end to end to see if I could see the continuity in that and I scored them uh, both the first pass and the second pass. Uh, then I set it aside for a day and then I went back to it again and I went to each one and I 
look for the logic between the various sections of their proposal to see if I could see the logic flow. And even if they had missed perhaps one of the uh, key critical business issues that were embedded in all the data, um, and they may have missed that and focused on something else that was perhaps less critical or less of an issue, from that point, was there a logic structure? Was there logic in where they took the proposal and had a chance to demonstrate their, their mastery and understanding of the uh, methodologies that they could uh, bring to bear? Uh, they even had to put together timelines and cost estimates. Um, very exciting. In terms of what I've learned about the students' strengths and weaknesses, I, they seem to be very well versed in the concepts and models and methods and tools and techniques of instructional design and human performance technology. Um, what may have seemed a challenge to them is, uh, and it was a little bit evident, was the understanding of business metrics, how business in general operate, you know, what would be acceptable turnover in this kind of an industry versus elsewhere. A large number may seem way out of line, but in fact is quite the norm. And they may not have appreciated that, um, and, but they had to deal with that. Um, so their understanding of business metrics, financial metrics, the concepts of return on investment or the, from the quality world, the cost of non-conformance and the cost of conformance, the R and the I uh, in ROI, um, and how to establish a value for a problem or an opportunity so that that could be compared to the cost of the investment to address it. Uh, that would seem to be a weakness. And that may, that's, that's a function of their own backgrounds that they bring into their educational programs and uh, what, uh, what classes and programs that they've had within that program that begin to address that. And given the fact that some of them could have been fairly early in their graduate studies, um, they may not have gotten to that yet. So, like in all cases, uh, it's fairly authentic in that there's all this variation in terms of uh, what the data is that they're confronted with, what they all bring to the party, um, their own experiences in, in working in a team uh, where they may or may not know each other very well, they don't know each other's strengths, they have to develop trust, they have to figure out a way to divide and conquer all of this work, uh, how to have different people attending to and writing up the various sections of this thing and then to make it all flow smoothly, how to go from a written proposal into a, a PowerPoint type presentation, uh, how to prepare themselves to answer what could be easy or difficult questions posed by the judges as uh, after their quick presentations. All very exciting and hopefully all a very valuable learning experience for all of them. Uh, that's what I see as the promise of this, is that uh, if we could only scale this to make this more uh, widely available, um, on one hand you can't have 20 different universities involved in this because you'd never find the amount of judges that you would need to do this because it's, it's a bit of a task. I would estimate that I probably spent between uh, 16 to 20 hours in total for my time in a four-month period in addressing this. And then there was time at the conference, too, that uh, was spent uh, on top of that. Um, but as with many things that I find in ISPI, despite the amount of work effort that might be required, um, it's all extremely valuable and almost always has an immediate payout, let alone the long-term payout that I see that this uh, bringing to the society and in particular to the students and the student community who are either members of the society or prospective members of the society. Um, I would like to applaud Matt Donovan and his company Option 6, which I believe is a division of General Physics, for sponsoring this, for taking on an enormous task of creating a well-integrated set of materials and process. And we're in the third year of this, and there's been continuous improvement each of the three years, and I'm sure there'll be continuous improvement going forward. But I think that we have something with just minor tweaks, something that, uh, in, fact, in fact, the society can be quite proud of what we have right now at the moment, 
um, and it can only get better. And so I would like to applaud Matt Donovan in particular and the Society for uh, sponsoring this, uh, making this happen, all the current and past judges and students and faculty advisors that had been involved in this, and to those of of that those groups who will be involved in this uh, going forward. Quite exciting. I would encourage uh, faculty advisors, people in the various programs of uh, instructional systems design and human performance improvement and technology across the, uh, the North America and across the globe to take a good hard look at this and to uh, entertain the thought of participating this, if not soon, uh, not too long after that. Thank you.